Oh, what's up everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. Now we want to show you how to actually tool up in a way that you can be so efficient that you never stop your machine to tool up. Your machine's not waiting for you to tool up. You actually go through a procedure called shrink fitting, where you actually put your tools in, then you preset, go to a presetter, you set your tools, and then you balance your tools for perfection, and that's what we do. Those are just a few of the things that we do in the new Heimer tool room. So today we're gonna actually teach you that process, and it's going to be awesome. Good What's up, again. Bob? Good seeing you. How long have you been with Heimer? Uh, ten years now. Ten, 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 ten years. years. Yeah. And uh, Bob and I have had a lot of really good talks mm -hmm. because you've been here for about a week setting everything up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I get training while everybody else gets training, right? Right. So right. we're going to actually go over here. You're going to show us exactly how to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, come on, guys. Let's go and uh, check this out. So probably a lot of people don't know what shrink fit is. Shrink fit is basically the diameter of this bore is smaller than the diameter of this tool. So I, I can't put this in here. This is a lot like putting a bearing in a wheel. Might have to heat one up so I can get it together. This works very similar. This machine is very simple to operate. This is uh, called the power shrink holder. It's a heavy wall thickness. Shrink fit is very uh, up and coming in, in the multi-axis world. And it's all about the rigidity of your setup and, and often, uh, overlooked part is the rigidity of the tool holder. So I'm gonna pop this in the machine. This tool has a data matrix code on it, so I can just scan my tool. And it tells me, gee, this is a three quarter inch shrink fit holder and it sets all the parameters automatically and it, all I need to do as the operator is say, you need to have your coil at position number six, which is for a three quarter to seven eighths diameter tool. So we're there, we're gonna lower this underneath my induction coil. We're gonna bring this down. Let's just hit the button here. And this is about a 12 second heat up time for this tool holder. It uh, won't get over 700 degrees 700. Fahrenheit. 700, right. And it's just in seconds. Right. I'm gonna put this in. My safe awesome. lock, it grabs. Now I'm gonna bring it over here. And I have a closed loop chilling system where I'm circulating a refrigerated coolant through this cooling body. Contact, you can see it here, I have a red light, a little LED has gone red now. And so this is gonna take about 30 seconds and when the red light flashes, it's going to tell me it's cool enough for the operator to touch. Awesome. So it goes from, it goes up to 700 Correct. degrees mm. and then it drops down to what? Down to room temperature. Mm. Okay. So cool enough to the touch. This machine is capable of shrinking between one eighth diameter up to inch and a quarter diameter. And uh, this machine is uh, optionally equipped with the heavy duty coil, which will allow us to shrink up to a, a two inch diameter tool in a shrink fit holder. This is what we call a spider. This is set up now for the 50 taper for the Doosan uh, NHM 6300. But when I come over to the 40 taper Doosan, I just pop that out and now I have 40 taper, I have Capto, I have BT30. Very simple, in out, ready to go. Heimer works with the uh, end user to, to determine what their, uh, their requirements are as far as spindle types, number of tool holders, types of equipment we need. I don't think people actually knew that you actually make tool rooms. I like mm -hmm. calling them tool cribs. Mm -hmm. If you had a huge shop, this could be 50 feet long. Correct. If you had right. a small shop, it could be like, like 10 or 15 feet Correct. based mm -hmm. on how you actually mm -hmm. build it out and what you're using, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So let's check our LED here. We're flashing now. So we know that this is cool enough to touch. So I'm going to take the cooling body off. Now I can take this tool holder assembly out and we're gonna come and we're gonna check the length of the tool holder. This is a Heimer Microset Violinear. It's, uh, it's an automatic machine that can also be run manually. So it runs with linear motors, there's no ball screws, it's very quiet and it's about 30% uh, faster than a ball screw machine. So I'm gonna take this tool, I'm gonna put it in the spindle, like so. 
and now I'm gonna clamp it. All right, and this clamps with five kilonewtons of clamping force, very similar to the way that the tool holder is pulled down in the machine tool spindle. Spindle force and the spindle force here are the same. It pulls the tool down and the spindle the same. So what I measure here is what I need for the machine tool. We started to put together a tool library. So I have various tools here for both the 50 taper and for the 40 taper machine. So the operator could simply come down the list here and find this tool. But this machine also has the ability where I can scan the data matrix code that's on this tool holder. So I'm gonna grab my scanner and I wanna say direct measurement. So it's gonna look for the tool ID that I scan. Now we see tool ID number 100. That's correct. I'm gonna say, yes, that's correct. And it says now, should I start the measurement automatically? Yes, I will. And we'll see now that the X and Z axis of the machine tool come and we're gonna measure each of these five flutes separately. Now, I can graphically look and see here is each cutting edge, not only in the diameter X, but also in Z. So the operator can say, hey, this looks good, this looks bad. Uh, this is really helpful on, on shell mills where I have multiple inserts that I can see that each insert is set properly. And when I'm done now, I can say apply this next and I'm gonna say, hey, I, let me put this in uh, pocket number 10 in the machine. Now I've printed a label that I can affix on this tool that not only has a QR code where if the machine tool were equipped with a scanner, I could read this and automatically input the data to the machine tool. It also has a man readable, so I see this is tool number such and such. It's this kind of a tool. I have this X dimension and this Z dimension that the operator could input that. This machine is also very interfaceable. We could tie this machine directly to the machine tool, so we could download those measurements from a single tool or multiple tools directly to the machine tool and the operator when ex execute it would load all the registers correctly. And at the higher end, here's a RFID chip. We could write the data to the RFID chip and if the machine were equipped with RFID, it could read this chip and also know what this tool is, know how much tool life is on this tool, the offsets are, and automatically load that to the machine tool. So now I've shrunk the tool, I've measured the tool, and now we're gonna to come to the balancing machine and we're gonna check the balance. So I like to tell people this is a lot like when you buy new tires for your car. You wouldn't buy new tires for your car without balancing them. Because if you drive away from the wheel shop, you feel it in your steering wheel, you feel it when you're braking, and you have the same issue of a tool holder assembly and a machine tool when it's not balanced. And the way it manifests itself in the machine, it's, it's in the surface finish, it's in the tool life, it's the way that the machine sounds when it's cutting, and eventually it's going to decrease the life of the spindle bearings in your machine tool. So again, this is a lot like why we balance on a car. So I've clamped the tool in here. This machine also has a scanner, so I can scan. It knows that, again, it's tool number 100. I'm gonna say, yeah. And this now spins, and this spindle is mounted on four sensors, so it can detect oscillation from unbalance. So we make a reading, and then we make a second reading at 180 degrees. Clamp the spindle again. And now we'll see the circle looks green, but it's not completely green. And so even though this is a balanced, it's a high quality balanced shrink fit holder, the fact that I've put a cutting tool in it and put a pull stud in it, I now have, I've affected the weight of it. So it's balanced pretty well, but it's not quite where we want it for this particular machine. So this tells me it stopped here where it's red, 
So the tool is heavy at this point. And to correct this tool, it's telling me to add weight behind the heavy point here. Much like the car tire, they put a weight on it, the wheel, to take to uh, offset the unbalance from the wheel assembly. So it tells me exactly what we need to do. We need to add weight here and here. And this particular holder has threaded holes in it where we can add weight. So it tells me that at this position here, I need to add 4.3 grams, and then I have 5.2 grams at the other spot. So the way we do that is we have a kit of weighted screws. And each screw has a weight, and then there's some charts if I have to be under the weight of the lightest screw, and I'm able then to add the screw that I need. So for example, in this case, I have to add 0.11 grams, which is gonna be a combination of a number six screw and a number three screw. So I'm gonna put the heavier screw in the back. I put my lighter screw up in the front. So the reason we're using two screws here is the amount of unbalance is less than the weight of the lightest screw in my kit. So by taking a heavy screw and a light screw, one minus the other then gives me that small minute amount. So now we run the cycle again. And now we see that our bullseye is all green because we're balanced to better than what we're looking for spindle-wise. So now I can pop this out. And the important thing here is that all this can happen while the machine tool is still running, making chips. Oh, Thank you, buddy. Great job, Thank great you. job. Thank you. Right from the beginning when I started my company, I had a tool crib. And over the years, the tool crib grew and grew and grew. Uh, when you get to a certain point, the larger shops, they actually hire a tool crib or a tool room attendant that actually sets up all of the tools and gets everything ready so the machinists can just keep the machines running nonstop. But even if you're small, you can still have a tool room and you can still have the tools in place. And as the, the machine's running, you can just walk to the side and you can set the tools for the next job. Change parts, go back, set a couple tools, boom, think about the third job, like what's coming next week, what's coming the week after, mm -hmm. put a couple carts in place, get everything all set, and then when the machine stops, you simply change out your fixture, put your tools in, boom, and you go and you save a huge amount of time. And in this day and age, we need to solve our customers' problems. We need to drop our prices. We need to be efficient, and we need to compete on a global level. And the way to compete is taking setup out of machining so it's only runtime, and then using the, the crazy optimal tools, extreme tools, to actually get after it, come back and kiss it, and then make the parts absolutely perfect efficiently and that's how you do it heimer boom bob thank you thank you so much thank you love hi having heimer here thank and, you uh, this is just the beginning mm -hmm. you guys are amazing i've known of these guys for years and years and years so having them here having the tool room boom so so good all right all right brother Great. thank you thank you very much